Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. My guest today is Nick Callisto. Nick is the Chief Information Officer of Avery Dennison, a role he's held for nearly four and a half years. I've interviewed Nick before, but I wanted to speak with him again because he and I recently caught up off the record and he enlightened me on the remarkable work Avery Dennison generally and IT more specifically are doing relative to environmental, social, and governance or ESG goals. As this is a topic of great consequence and interest to many technology and digital executives, I thought this might be especially timely and enlightening. Nick is a former Chief Information Officer of Xylem and K of Nanian prior to his current post. Nick Callisto, welcome to Technovation. It's great to speak with you again. Same, same here, Peter. Thanks for having me. No, it's, a, it's a great pleasure. Nick, I wanted to have this conversation. You and I had an off-the-record conversation uh, several months ago, and I was really amazed uh, about the, how forward-thinking your, your thought process was around the topic of uh, environmental implications and sustainability goals that you are working towards as a, as a chief information officer at Avery Dennison. And, and I wonder... Uh, I wanted to have this conversation to draw some of these insights from you because uh, it, this is a, a, a topic. I think your leading edge, the, the point at which you were you you began your thought process, was really ahead of a lot of your peers, as far as I could tell. But a lot of the the, the enthusiasm for this set of um, uh, undertakings is growing tremendously, and I thought I, we'd shine a light in this conversation on an executive. Uh, who has, I, I think, been been leading the way on some of these topics and 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 hear from you as to the implications of this. For, in terms of, maybe you can set the stage if you don't mind and talk a bit about Avery Dennison's business to, to provide the context into which where are some of the levers you, you think about pulling um, as, you, uh, as you contemplate the environmental and sustainability activities that you might improve? Yeah. That sounds great. Um, Avery Dennison uh, is a, uh, a global material science uh, and, and manufacturing company, and we specialize in the design and the manufacture of a, of a wide variety of, of labeling materials, right? So the company's products are used in nearly every industry, including, including pressure-sensitive uh, materials for labels and, and graphic applications, tapes, and other uh, bonding solutions for industrial, medical, and retail applications, tags, and tags, labels, and embellishments uh, for apparel, that the apparel industry, and, uh, and radio frequency identification solutions that, uh, that are really used very quite often in, in the apparel and, the, and, and many other markets, RFID. Uh, and uh, I'll just give you a little bit of, just in terms of the, the, the size and scale, the company's headquartered in Mentor, Ohio, and it employs uh, 35,000 employees. Uh, in more than 50 countries and reported last year, uh, 2021, our sales were 8.4 billion. And so when you think about the products that we manufacture, label, uh, graphics materials, bonding, bonding uh, materials, you know, we have to make sure that we produce this material in a, in a way that's sustainable so that when they're applied to in, in the consumer packaged goods industry, as an example, to a, a bottle or, or, or a package, that package is not deemed then you know, uh, non-recyclable, right? That, that product has to be recyclable. Um, and, you know, so we try to conform to these standards and helping our customers be able to uh, produce uh, products that are sustainable, uh, that are recyclable, as an example. So, yeah, it's a very important part of, of the value chain. And talk a bit about I know I know at the at the enterprise level there are there are a number of goals that the company has set. Uh, talk a bit about those uh, for a moment, if you would. Yeah, we, we strive to be a force for good and, and, and create long-term value for, for our stakeholders. That means um, innovating um, and operating in ways that are, you know, really have a, a positive impact uh, for, for people and, and, our, and our planet. Um, and we are working towards two sets of, of sustainability goals, eight goals that were set back in uh, 2015 for 2025. And then we also created uh, three broader goals uh, last year. Uh, to be met by 2030. Um, and uh, we've already exceeded our 2025 goal for reducing greenhouse gas emission. And uh, we are closing in on many other uh, of, those, of those goals. As, as I mentioned, in 2021, we established three uh, broader 2030 goals. And uh, we, again, we made progress uh, against all of them as well. Um, one is delivering innovations uh, that advance our circular economy. Uh, the second one is uh, reducing our environmental impact uh, on the operations and the supply chain. And, the, and then the third one is uh, making a positive impact on 
uh, by, by enhancing the livelihood of our, our people and our, and our communities. So I can give you an example of each of the three goals from a company perspective, right? And I can talk later on about the IT part, but you know, goal one is advancing the circular economy. And, and by example, um, by 20, 2030, 100% uh, of our standard label products will contain recycled or, or renewable content. So that's an example of the first goal. Goal two is about reducing our environmental uh, impact on our operations and our, our supply chain. So by 2030, we have a goal is to reduce our scope one and scope two greenhouse gas emissions by 70% uh, from our 2015 baseline. And we're already at 48%. So we're really doing well in that, that area. And then goal three is focusing on the livelihood of, of our people and, and, and the communities we serve. And as part of this, we have uh, metrics around inclusion index, employee engagement, uh, females in, in, in manager roles and above, and also safety. So that's, you know, it's a summary of our three broader goals that we set last year with some of the metrics that we focus on. Nick, actually, if you wouldn't mind, as you on the heels of that, um, I, I'd love to understand to what extent is this uh, like doing good versus uh, good business? Uh, and obviously those those two go hand in hand. Uh, but, you know, there are those who, who would say that that uh, by, by by pushing for too aggressively, you might have disadvantages relative to a company that that isn't doing so 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 aggressively and using older practices or methods. Talk a bit about both the clearly the doing good, which you articulated so nicely, but but also kind of the extent to which it's good business practice as well. Yeah, if you think about it, like so, so look at some of the, the twenty thirty targets we have about uh, around uh, helping with the livelihood of our people and the communities we serve. So we think of, think of metrics like. The inclusion index, you want to have an inclusive culture within a company. Um, and that's good for our company, but it's also good for our employees and the communities that we serve. And, you know, 85%, uh, a 2030 goal around inclusion is, is 85%. And last year we were at 81%, right? So, you know, relatively good in relation to our, our metric. Uh, employee engagement, you know, if you keep employees really happy, you know, it does have a correlation to having positive impact on your business performance. There's a lot of studies out there. So, uh, where our goal is 82% um, on, on employee engagement. We've done really well there as well. Uh, female and manager roles uh, and above, our goal is uh, 40%. And last year we were at 35%. Um, and, and safety, you know, we have many factories around the world. Um, and that's not the only place that we have to protect our own work, workers. We have to protect our workers everywhere in the offices as well, right? Distribution centers, warehouses, uh, our factories, our people out, in, out there in, in the sales force. Um, and uh, we had, uh, was it 0.2 uh, recordable incidents uh, rate? That's our, that's our goal. So I think we were like 0.21 last year. I think that was what it was. Um, so these are all you know, examples. And also grants. We have uh, in 2021, 70, I think it was like 74% of, of the countries in which we operated and received a, a grant. Um, and so, um, yeah, we don't disclose the targets around that. But that's that's uh, some of the the things that we do to you know help the company perform, but you know, but also at the same time, right, Peter, you're helping the communities that you're serving in as well. Does yeah, that help? Does that get at your answer? That, your question? That's, yeah, that makes sense. I really appreciate that that greater context. Well, I, as you alluded to a moment ago, I'd love to hear more about IT's role in driving some of these forward. Talk a bit about uh, what you and the team are doing specifically to to, to help push these these forward in, in the positive direction. Yeah, yeah. As I said before, I mean. I, I, another uh, calls that I've been on around this topic, you know, um, IT isn't always seen as a big part of the problem, but we can be a big part of the solution. Uh, we're not often, often thought of that, but we can get into maybe later on um, some, some tips I'll share around uh, how you can make a bigger impact around sustainability in your own companies, right? Um, but when we think about IT, we usually think of technologies that help us do our job, right? We think about our factories, we think about how we connect with our customers, um, but what, what if those same technologies can be, can, uh, and, and that the power of those technologies can do greater good to enable sustainability, right? So IT is helping Avery Dennison improve sustainability, and we incorporated it in, as one of our strategic priorities in IT. So it's actually a separate strategic priority in IT, which is, I, I think, unusual. You know, I, don't, I don't think if you, it's a commonplace that uh, CIOs will create as a separate strategy. I think it's becoming more and more maybe commonplace, but it hasn't been. And, and let, so we did that last year. And we, if you look at our, our first company goal, which focuses on advancing uh, our circular economy, it's essentially about, about innovation, right? So in building products that, that satisfy recycling, composting, um, uh, reuse, a lot of reuse in this, right? 
uh, and uh, of, of, of single uh, use uh, consumer package packaging and, and apparel, right, uh, in our products and in our solutions. And to support this goal in IT, we partnered with the R&D organization to design and deploy a laboratory information management system to accelerate and modernize uh, our company's innovation capabilities. So that's one of the things that we did in that. Another example in this first goal uh, is labor uh, liner waste uh, recycling. So it's, it's a major opportunity to, to, to recycle the labor liner waste. So we developed a system called AD Circular. You'll notice a lot of our IT programs are called AD something, <laughs> AD Circular. Um, and it's an application that we built using low code technology um, that enables the process for um, our customers to recover uh, liner and, and mater uh, matrix material uh, uh, from our customers. We recover it from our customers and we assist with recycling through this through this portal. Um, and uh, several years ago, uh, one of our company uh, uh, digital teams, we have digital product teams around the company, created and launched Atma, a, a connected cloud, uh, collected, uh, cloud uh, platform, enabling everyday items to have a unique digital identity. And uh, Atma uses triggers. This is, a, so the relationship to sustainability is, Peter, is that Atma uses triggers uh, to enable brands to create more sustainable, resilient, and, and circular uh, uh, supply chains. Um, if you think about the second goal uh, related to uh, uh, reducing our environmental uh, impact, it, it's, it's, we're focusing on measuring carbon emissions, right? And, and so last year, um, our, our IT worked with uh, our, our compliance organization, uh, to deliver an enterprise-wide um, system of record for environmental, social, and governance, ESG, uh, metrics tracking. And, and now we have 100% of our company-wide metrics in a database, right? It's, it's, a, it's a centralized repository for the entire company. Never had that before. Um, we also launched a product um, integrity management system known as PIMS. That's an internal name to help us promote safe products to that ensure regulatory uh, compliance, but also satisfy customer requirements. So those are some of the things that we're doing around the second goal. Um, but I, I, I would be remiss not to mention also what you'd probably expect of the IT organization around um, uh, energy. Um, you know, the organ if you look at, we double click on the IT organization itself, um, you know, we've, of course we've optimized our private data center and our remote uh, facilities with technologies that uh, have made them more sustainable, such as server virtualization. It's been around for more than a decade uh, today, you know, we have more than 95% of our servers are, are virtualized. No surprise. We're, using, we're leveraging you know, flash storage uh, technology, which requires much less uh, power and, and to be more resilient. But I mean, the story doesn't end there, of course, for most companies. We recognize the, the, that the public cloud, right, Peter, you know, it, it allows us to gain access to greener, more sustainable uh, technology. And we're shifting more of our workload uh, to the public cloud with systems and, and platforms like Ring Central. We're running on Google now for a digital workplace uh, service now. Oracle Fusion is a big push for us right now. We're rolling out Oracle Fusion around the world. Microsoft Azure uh, is the platform behind our digital products. So uh, making a big push around all of that. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's not or it's, it's end, right? How do we how do we tackle that second goal with internally with NIT, but also help our business partners? And the third goal is. Uh, Focusing on, you know, enhancing the livelihood of our people in our communities, um, and um, we continue to create a, work, a workplace that uh, employees feel uh, recognized uh, and have more opportunities to, to voice their opinions. As that goes back to that inclusion, like we talked about earlier, feel inspired to, to learn and grow. And, and for example, um, I, I think this is a really interesting one that we did last year. I think you'll like it. Um, you know, our ability to communicate with our employees and our customers in their native language, right? It fosters a more inclusive culture uh, and facilitates a, a more, um, uh, you know, more, more engagement and, and loyalty in the company. So we launched, here we go, AD Translate. <laughs> I told you. Um, it's a new tool that uses artificial intelligence to produce instant, high quality, Avery Denison relevant content translation, right? Uh, in 19 supported languages, right? We, we, you, also, you can go across all, all languages, right? I think it's 100 languages. Um, it just pure translation, but this is Avery Denison specific content, right? So there's certain words that we use in our company that get translated perfectly, right? Uh, and so it's an amazing uh, advancement. We're saving uh, a half a million, this is a half a million dollars a quarter 
on avoiding uh, language translation services from outside parties that we use, right? So yeah, there's, there's a, a, a nice cost benefit. That's not the reason why we did it, honestly. It was more around the inclusion uh, factor. And uh, you know, so and we have our engagement scores. Uh, the last I'll say on this, I know we have more questions to get to, but you know, if we look uh, more inwardly at IT, our IT employee engagement score rose to 88% last year. And when I joined back in 2018, it was in February, um, the year before that, the employee engagement rate was 76. So we've, we've grown, um, uh, what is it, like 12, 12 points since I joined. And the survey and the data shows us that it's because, largely because our employees have confidence in our strategy. They believe that the company supports their skills and their development and, and the well being uh, and, uh, you know, in, in which we operate in, and, you know, the, the supply chain, the communities that we serve that we, that we operate in. So we, they, the company supports that. And they feel good about the fact that we support that. Uh, and they have life, you know, work-life balance. So those are, I know I went a little long there, sorry about that, but I just want to give you some context and color about the three goals and how IT is contributing to it. That's really great. And and Nick, at a time, I want to linger on the last one for a moment, if you don't mind, at a time where the combination of the great reset or great resignation, as it's sometimes referred to, and the war for talent, both of them kind of, you know, uh, leading to a lot of complications for teams generally, IT teams more specifically, have you found that some of the, the work that you're doing has aided the process as you both look to keep great people, but also find great new ones? Actually, particularly around the diversity work that we've been doing and the inclusion mm-hmm. and employee engagement. I, like I was telling you earlier, uh, I can't resist this. I was listening to uh, uh, CNBC this morning and, and one, of the, one of the commentators said, uh, you know, these days, no, no boss is going to their employee and saying, you're lucky to have a job, right? Um, they're, they're going to their employees saying, what would you like on your popcorn this week, butter or salted caramel, when you come in the three days that you may work this week? So because this war on talent is, is unbelievable, right? So um, and, uh, you know, diversity is um, an integral part of our DNA in IT. And, and first, women represent 40 percent of my IT leadership team uh, and fill 20 percent of our IT manager roles uh, worldwide. Um, it, it's, a, it's a two point improvement since over 2020. We could do a lot more, and, and there are companies out there doing better than this, of course, but uh, we, we really focus a lot of energy on it. Um, in the U.S., um, women hold about 30% of all of our IT uh, jobs, and our goal is that by 2025, uh, 30% of our worldwide IT manager roles um, and above will be, will be held by women. And it's, it's, a, it's a challenge because you have to make sure you have a 50-50 slate to do this well and to grow this, it's we, we have actions like ensuring we have a 50-50 slate, ensuring that we have one, at least one, if not more, the interview panelists that are that are female as well, right? Uh, making sure that job descriptions, the postings are not biased, that they're reasonable, right? They're not asking for all kinds of credentials that don't really matter, that may actually have uh, females kind of shy away from it. But they don't have every single you know, item on that list. So there's a lot of studies out there that show that, that women won't, won't apply for a role if they feel that they're not qualified for it, where men will right, apply for that same role. These are the studies that I'm referring to. So, yeah, there's a lot we're doing around, around this. Um, um, and, and also just you know, the broader diversity, too, um, Peter. You know, 42% of our North American uh, uh, IT workforce is diverse ethnically. So uh, these are all important things that we, we're watching very carefully, not just the metrics, not just measuring, but we're doing as well to make sure that we continue to, to, to improve. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that, in many ways, you're, you're showing the power of the metrics, that it moves people in the right direction by pointing out what success looks like and gauging progress against that. So that's very, very interesting to hear you hear you describe that and provides ex- specific examples. Congratulations on the, on the progress you've already made. Um, so I wanted to also ask you, uh, what recommendations would you offer to other chief information officers? As I mentioned, I think you're, you've been thinking about a lot of the topics we've been describing a little bit longer than at least I have deciphered from my conversations with with your peer group, and therefore, you know, have some months, if not years, ahead of uh, folks on a topic that is now newly for many becoming a, a really important priority, and 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 a lot are seeking great ideas and wisdom and, and, and just like you've already begun to supply. But I wonder if there are other things you can you can offer in terms of suggestions for your peers as to how they might follow in your footsteps in making comparable progress. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, first and foremost is I, I just encourage people to take time to understand the company's sustainability goals, right? And, and to meet with the, the sustainability team. If there's a sustainability czar, make sure you get some time with that person. 
Um, try to get a seat on the sustainability council. That's not always easy because, as I said earlier, we're not always thought about being a part of the, the problem or the solution uh, in IT. Maybe that's changing, uh, and maybe in some companies it's more uh, relevant, but I think it's it's something that uh, we have to work at. Um, if you don't have a sustainability czar or a council, just you know, meet with leaders that have a, a commitment um, or are very interested in this in this topic and and, uh, and advancing the company's sustainability causes. I think that the, and just learn from them and, and understand how IT might play a role. I, I the second thing I, I I would suggest is appoint someone in IT to build these IT sustainability strategy. Uh, it won't get done by itself. It's not going to be a natural thing that you know your application owners are going to think of. You know. Um, or your infrastructure leads aren't going to automatically think of putting all kinds of sustainability programs and metrics in place. You really have to lead this um, from this role um, and work with your IT leadership team. And, and believe me, my IT leadership team gets it, and they're very much focused on this. But you have to lead it from the top and make sure you have someone appointed uh, into this role uh, and have that person report at least into either into the CIO or into one of the direct reports and have that person update um, the IT leadership team on uh, on the on the strategy that they've created uh, with their with their stakeholders uh, on a regular basis, and we have it on a monthly basis. We have, every month we have our sustainability leader present to the ITLT on the strategy, the plans, the actions, the challenges. You know, to get input as to and, and guidance on how to do any kind of course correct and get you know help assistance that they might need. So, I mean, I mentioned very quickly a couple of programs. There's a lot going on on this topic um, around a large company like Avery Dennison. So there's quite a few uh, quite a few programs that we've got to keep track of. And Nick, I I, I wanted to ask you, uh, you, you as you say, great advice in terms of delving more deeply into the sustainability goals the company has, perhaps get involved in the Sustainability Council. Uh, and, and as you pointed out, the original eight goals predate your time with the company. Uh, I sorry, you didn't say that, but they were they were formed in 2015 when you weren't with the organization. So so there was kind of a basis that you could help build upon. Is there a reason for those who might be listening where there are not yet sustainability goals at the enterprise level? There isn't a sustainability council. Do you see the CIO's role as significant enough that they can uh, become sort of leaders and and develop the impetus for the company more generally speaking, uh, where that may not already exist? I think they can they can certainly help be provocative about it and, and, and be an influencer for sure, because there are things that you can do just in IT, as I, as I mentioned, even if the company doesn't have broader goals, and most companies have broader goals these days, right? Especially the publicly traded companies, you kind of can't get away with not having you know, ESG metrics, right? So they're, they're, so in a publicly traded company, there's a, probably a, 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 a better place to start because the company will have goals um, that you can align with and then demonstrate demonstrate and tell the story how IT fits into that, right? How we're going to help power that, right? Um, in cases where there's not goals, um, or it, you can still bring to the table, right? Because a lot of research out there um, on what you can do, right? I would say there's a lot of research. It, we talked about this. There's, there's begun, beginning to become more research on this topic, more written about it, more, more, more talks like this on it, um, that give you some tips about where you should look, what can you do? Because is, you know, there's not 30 goals on this topic, right? There's going to be goals around circular economy. There's going to be goals around, you know, improving the livelihood of people. They may be worded differently, right, Peter? But they're going to get at the same type of thing. Um, environmental impact, carbon emissions, of course, right? So I think as an IT leader, you just got to think through how can IT help? It usually comes in the form of applications that you can help R&D with, right? It's definitely the metrics. It's the accounting systems, the ESG accounting systems, that you can work on, um, you know, the innovation programs you can put in place. And of course, looking in your own backyard, right? Looking at your data centers and as we move more and more to the cloud, making sure you're partnering with, with technology providers that also have a deep interest in sustainability and measuring them. So as you go through your evaluation of new providers, are they a sustainable company? Do you want to work with them, right? Do they believe in diversity? So that's something that we're evolving as well. How do we look at our technology providers and how do we evaluate them relative to sustainability? Nick, as you look to the future, what are some ideas that you're pursuing now that that uh, will continue to to uh, capture and 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 take advantage of the momentum you've already built? Yeah, I, you know, to address that, I think I'll, I'll frame it once again uh, based on the three sustainability goals that we have. I think it's a good way to kind of give it context. You know, first is delivering innovations that uh, advance the circular economy. 
uh, reducing environmental impact, and then uh, making a positive social impact. Those are the three. So to support the first goal um, uh, with the circular economy, uh, we're going to be shifting from a product compliance um, mindset to a product stewardship mindset. And, you know, when you think about product compliance, it's all about um, are our products meeting essential uh, legal requirements, whereas product stewardship is a, a product centered, uh, uh, centered approach to um, environmental protection. That's how we think about it. Right. And so product stewardship calls on, you know, like all the actors uh, in the in the product life uh, cycle, manufacturers, retailers, users, disposers to share the responsibility um, of the environmental impacts uh, of, of the products that we that we that we develop and take a leadership role uh, in the realm and really leap forward with product um, product a product centered approach and with this product stewardship program we've got going on. So we're designing a system a system to enable us to accelerate sustainability and circularity uh, efforts um, and, and across the value chain. So we're working on that this year. Um, it's, it's a complex topic, um, and uh, but we are putting a lot of energy on it. And, and then the second goal is about reducing the environmental uh, footprint of the company. And, and last year, as I mentioned earlier, we developed an ESG tracking system. We have 100% of our metrics in the, in the system. But this year, we're working with our sites to implement ESG improvement systems. You know, systems that are focusing on safety. How do we how do we improve safety in our factories? And using a lot of emerging technologies like computer vision to help protect our factory workers, right? Are there places where they're not, where they're not supposed to walk, right? Or do they need two people to lift something, not one, right? And, and, and there's using computer vision, you can you can monitor that and set off alarms, you know, things like that. Are they wearing a helmet? Is there a spill on the floor? You know, computer vision can help with that. So that's an example of using emerging technology uh, as a as a way of, of of making an improvement in ESG. Um, and also, we're going to be extending the functionality, Peter, of our carbon footprint accounting system for scope one, two, and three this year. And um, on, the, on the topic of, of carbon, we, 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 are, we just produced um, a, a system called Eco Design, which is, is using the Google Suite. Um, and it's a criteria based process to, to where we develop new products that will help a, have a positive uh, social, environmental, and, and financial impact. So it's just about helping us make better decisions about the products that we create and offer that information uh, to our customers. It's really enabling the R&D process. Uh, we, we piloted it in Europe and now we're scaling it around the world. Um, and then on um, the third goal is advancing our social impact uh, on the communities in, in which we operate and serve. Uh, diversity and inclusion continue to be a critical focus for, for IT. And uh, so we continue to so we really tap into the power of a diverse workforce. So we're expanding how we think about diversity uh, beyond just gender and, and uh, looking at all forms of diversity and really taking a global view of that. And especially now with this remote workforce capability that we have, that we really have proven that we're effective, really opens up this reservoir of opportunity to get at candidates that you never could get at before. So I don't think we've tapped that as an IT industry as well as we, we could, right? And uh, I, I'm not, I haven't seen that. We always had this sort of notion that you have these hubs and you can only hire in your hubs. That that's off the table. It's it's higher from anywhere right, that you that you that you're legally allowed to hire from, um, and uh, put those put those employees to work, and you can create a lot more diversity in a company as a result of that. So those are some of the things that we're that we're doing in, in 2022 and, and beyond to continue to help the the company uh, become more sustainable. Well, great insights across the board, Nick. Uh, Nick Callisto, really appreciate you taking time and sharing your perspectives, uh, your leadership on a topic that, as I say, is growing in relevance and importance and underscoring the, the ways in which you are doing so, examples of how you're doing so, uh, progress against the metrics that you're driving, and ultimately the ways in which you're, you're doing well by doing good. Uh, thank you so much for a really interesting conversation. Thank, thank you for having me. I, I always enjoy it. Thank you so much.